We have a Culligan AC30 reverse osmosis water system here. And we have three filters that are extremely old that are going to be replaced. And the water tank is totally waterlogged and it's like 20 years old. So we bought a replacement for that as well. Now before we do any work, we need to make sure that we turn off the water. So first thing I'm going to do is I remove this water tank, which weighs about... 20 pounds and super heavy. Um, this is a quick connect fitting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna push this tube in and then we're gonna hold this little tab right here down and in and then we're gonna pull that tube out. Again, this is a quick connect fitting. So we're gonna push this in and then we're gonna hold that tab in and can pull that tube out. I've already re remo removed this so that's why this is loose but that's how you remove uh, the quick connect fitting. So then you can drain your tank before you dispose of it. Now this reverse osmosis system wasn't working and water was just barely trickling out of the Culligan faucet up there. We weren't getting any ice. So what I did is I turned the water off and then I ran our water inlet here and I had to buy this and it went from the larger size tubing to the smaller size and I just fitted this piece in here. I have our water directly going in here. So it goes directly to that little faucet and then it also goes to the ice maker. This is a way to totally bypass that reverse osmosis system until your parts come in. So our parts have come in now. So we're gonna continue working on this. So now after we've removed that, we're gonna pull our AC30 system out here. I've already disconnected the tubes. And again, you're just gonna push this tube in Hold that blue cap down and then that tube will come direct. So all we're gonna do is push the tube in, hold this blue cap in, and then pull up. And that's how we remove that tube. So next what we're gonna do, now that we've removed this, we're gonna pull these clips out and these are gonna come out. There is gonna be a rubber washer here. I've already removed two of them. And there might be some water in here, so be ready for water to come out. And this one still has the washer, and these washers are like 20 years old. So make sure you're replacing these. Um, and then from there, what we're gonna do is you're gonna have these little caps here, and you can actually just grab these with your fingernails, maybe get a screwdriver, and these are gonna pull out. And there's four of these here. And there's little washers in there that we'll need to replace. So we're just going to make sure we take these caps and set them somewhere so they don't get crushed. Next we're going to pull out these rubber washers in here and get replacements for those. We're also going to pull out these washers and get replacements for these. These I could not find at Lowe's or Home Depot. I did find them at Ace Hardware. These were in the specialty boxes and they weren't by all the rubber washers. They were actually by like the nuts and bolts in those little slide out containers that they have. And so we removed all three of those washers now as well. Now we have these washers right here. There's the three new replacements. And uh, you know these, like this one right here, it's flat on the front, the inside and the outside. So it's probably 20 years old as well. So we have our three washers. And we're going to put some plumber's grease around these and then put those into the little rubber washers here that we're going to have to remove as well. Now I've replaced those two small little washers on that tab. And those were 5 sixteenths outer diameter, 3 sixteenths inner diameter. So those, those are in here. Then I replaced the... gray and red one, and that was 7 sixteenths, one and a quarter. And then I did want to replace the two blue ones, and they were out of the size I needed, so I had to buy 9 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, and it's too thick, so I can't get the tube through there. So what I did is I removed this, and I figured that's the newest part that they had there. So I'm gonna hope those two washers work, otherwise I'm gonna have to go buy two replacements. Now you're gonna take your charcoal filter and you're gonna put the side with the O-rings down and that's gonna be on the side opposite. 
your inlet and outlet. Next, we're going to take our cover. We're going to go over the O-ring, and this is the cover that does not have the little rubber washer peg coming out. You put that cover on, then you're going to take your clip, and you just push that down and into place. The center one is the membrane, so we're going to slide that in. And then that gets the cover that has the little peg with the two small washers. Just slide that in. Once that's in place, we'll push this clip back in. And then next we push that last filter in place. Make sure I, a little bit of the washer had started to come out and pop up, so I had to reseat that. So we'll watch to make sure your washer stay aligned. Put your last cover on. And then once that's in place, we'll get our clip. Now our water inlet right here, this blue line I have here, because I have disconnected this, and that's gonna actually go into our gray fitting right there. And then our tube right here, that's gonna flow out, is actually gonna be set up to the red fitting. That's gonna be the farthest one in the back. Now the 3 8 inch tube that's at the top, closest to the front, which is by the Culligan, this is gonna hook up to our tank. So I tried using some rubber flex tubing because that's what we had. Um, it's not, that doesn't keep its uh, circular diameter to fit into those O-rings. So you do have to get the poly tubing. Um, so I went and I ended up replacing these with the uh, poly tubing. It's a lot harder and firmer and it, it holds its shape when you slide it into the O-rings. So please make sure you do that. I'm gonna push this in and then pull out a little bit. And then I had bought this adapter so it's a uh, one quarter to three eighths and then I was just using the inlet so I could bypass the reverse osmosis so now that I've got the filters I'm gonna push this down remove this clip and we're gonna put our inline filter there and then when you set this in line make sure that the flow is going the correct way so the thicker portion is going to be the part that comes from your uh, RO system and so that's going to be the farther back tube, so it's the top tube that's towards the back, and that is going to feed in here. Once we have all of that connected, we're going to turn our water system back on. So we do have to be careful, just in case some of these new tubes aren't fitting tightly, in case it starts leaking everywhere. Your water coming in and watch for drips. Turn the water on real slow to start. So these tubes are leaking. Um, I wasn't sure how they would work. So I'm gonna turn this off. So I ended up buying this plastic poly tubing at Lowe's and that's doing the trick, but I did have to replace all of the washers. So I bought this pack of O-rings at Lowe's. This is 3 8 inner diameter, and that fits that 3 8 diameter poly tubing. And so I got that put in there, as you can see. So I had to replace all of the O-rings. I replaced the one on the nozzle here, and I replaced the two up there. And even the O-ring on the new inline filter was leaking, so I had to replace that as well. 